Right, so the problem that I set out to tackle was that of patients who hear um, voices that are critical, bullying, horrible to them, and uh, really disruptive to their lives. And that's about one in four people with schizophrenia, despite treatment with antipsychotic medication. And not only does hearing distressing voices have a major impact on patients, but also their carers. So the, the problem is that um, the persistent voices impair the ability to work, to think, to make social contacts, and perhaps more worrying, there are patients who receive command hallucinations, um, often, well, sometimes commit violence against relatives and members of the public, and indeed the patients uh, themselves will, are subject to having harm, and one in 10 patients with schizophrenia commit suicide, which is an appalling statistic. Now, looking at the phenomenology of the voices, when you ask people who hear voices, what's the worst aspect of hearing them? Many people say the helplessness. There's nothing we can do to get rid of them. However, the minority of people who are able to establish a dialogue with the voice feel much more in control. So that led me to consider how could I help the patient create a dialogue with an invisible voice? The problem with an invisible voice is that you get none of the cues that normally sustain dialogues because we rely very heavily on people smiling, uh, nodding their heads, uh, maintaining eye contact, and of course all that's missing with an invisible voice. So this therapy was developed for people with persecutory voices despite having <coughs> adequate medication. <coughs> Brief summary of the therapeutic procedures. An avatar is created by the patient to represent the voice they hear, and then a dialogue with the avatar brings it under the patient's control. I'll explain how. And uh, over the course of the therapy, which is no more than six sessions, the avatar changes its persona from being persecutory to becoming supportive and helpful. Now, the rationale for the therapy is um, material that's really only come to light in the last 10 years or so, and that is that various traumatic experiences in childhood, physical or sexual abuse, emotional neglect, bullying by peers, and absence of parents are all associated with persecutory voices developing in adult life. Uh, in my experience, this is mediated by low self-esteem stemming from the traumatic events. In fact, a high proportion of hearers, voice hearers, suffer from depression. And in this study, the mean score on the Calgary Depression Scale for the control group was 22.67, and for the experimental group, 26.5, and the maximum score you could obtain is 27. So both these groups are very close to the maximum. That's a very high level of depression.